intended to be the console version of the hugely popular Advance Wars series for the Game Boy Advance. Sure, it's not made by the same people, but it's stylistically and strategically similar to Advance Wars. But will it thrill or disappoint Advance War fans? Mm. Find out when we review Battalion Wars. War can be a drag, except when it's as bright, bouncy, and wonderful as Bugs Bunny's Easter basket. Go, go, go! Battalion Wars bounds, blasts, and bellows its way around the battlefield like a Teletubby on shrooms. Battalion Wars leaves its Advance Wars parents back in the grid grind and die a cruel system of primitive war games. The game spaces are fairly large, which at times will have you running, or driving, or flying some distance before contacting confrontation. A handy overhead map places your objectives under pretty shiny stars, just like in real life. The backstory is pure slaptastically sugary sarcasm, with awesome America kicking the boy bling off a nasty array of stereotypically accented foreigners. This is an outrage! Sneaky reds and Baltic bullies all line up to take a crack at the gleaming, perfectly shaved and scented jaw of the guys with God on their side. But soon you will learn that there's no escape from my righteous entrance. The sprawl of the battlefield is quickly assessed through a map magnifier section of the game space. This not only guides you to your objectives, but also comes in handy when determining the size of the enemy's pallet o whoop ass. At times, when it can get a scotch annoying, the game will burst in... Nicely done, Commander. ...to either continue the title's cartoonish story arc or that you shouldn't misuse your toys. You let them take out our anti-air support. The nice thing is how fluid changing into different units is. As enemies converge on your mini units with a veritable Swiss army-sized armada of armaments, it's up to you to fly around the field of conflict and repress their every advance. Your brave warriors come in all shapes and sizes. Mobile mortar men belch explosive blooms of doom. Bazookas. Having machine gunners. Flamethrowers and nervous system melting gas guys all add to the visual parade of death. You'll also get the opportunity to operate tanks, helicopter gunships, and bombers taking the game's physics engine for a spin over the fields of fury. Strategy is key. Lining up the right man with the right tool for the job is the difference between life and video game death. Sadly, there's no multiplayer option present, which seems like an odd omission considering how much fun co-op play could have been. There's about 20 missions with three unlockable if you score highly. Cycling through units to command their movements was thankfully a simple affair, but in the pixel tornado of heavy combat, you can easily forget who's getting pummeled until it's too late. Since there's no way to chain commands or assign multiple units to an objective, Gameplay can become a little labor-intensive and confusing for those used to those features. You gotta go to war with the game you have! The game can, of course, be loads of ballistic fun, and its fluid camera and color-saturated graphics is a nice addition to the cube. With a gun in one hand and a dove in the other, we give it a four out of five. If you have a GameCube, you might as well check out Battalion Wars because there's really nothing else new coming out of Nintendo's little purple lunchbox. Yeah, Sally, the Cube gets very few game exclusives these days. At least its current exclusives are pretty damn good. Yeah. We're talking, of course, about the Metroid Prime series, Mario Kart Double Dash, and Resident Evil 4. Well, in the case of Resident Evil 4, it's getting ported to the PS2 anyway. See, that way Capcom can finally make some money off of what is arguably the best game of 2005.